Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I am so, so happy to be in front of all of you today. And it is such an honor, a privilege to be delivering the word of the Lord, especially that today we are celebrating Women's Sunday here at Grace UMC. So sa lahat po ng mga kababaihang nanonood at nakikinig sa mensahe natin ngayon, Happy, Happy Women's Sunday. And my heart is for you. I am always with you. So let me encourage you by reminding you that you have been saved, you have been chosen, you have been sealed, and you have been set apart by the Lord Himself at such a time as this. Ibig pong sabihin, pinili ka po ng Panginoon, you were handpicked by the Lord, sinasadya niya po na nandito ka sa mga panahong ito ngayon dahil He has created you and He has enabled you to do great and mighty things for Him, through Him, all for His greater glory. So your beauty, your you being a woman, is your strength. And so I pray that we continue to walk according to the calling of the Lord for us and maximize our potential being a woman of God. At hindi po ito sinasawalang bahala ng ating Panginoon. In fact, you are important in these last days. Allow me to also grab this opportunity to thank our leaders, the entire leadership of Grace United Methodist Church for having me today. Alam niyo po, nakakatuwa ang Panginoon because this message has been prolonged. This has been postponed for so many Sundays already. In fact, this was originally planned for March. Tapos coronavirus happened. But then I believe that God's time is always, always on time. So again, to the leaders of the church, maraming maraming salamat po for obeying the Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Praise and glory be to your name, O Mighty One, O Holy One. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge who you are right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We continue to declare that you are the one seated in the throne of our hearts. And do whatever pleases you, Holy Spirit. I declare that this place is a holy ground. I set the pillars of fire and the walls of thunder around this place. And I speak that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name. Father God, do what you gotta do today and be who you wanna be in our lives. Malaya ka pong kumilo sa aming kalagitnaan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me begin with a story. Many years ago, I was an athlete. Bata pa lang po kami ng kapatid ko, tumatalo na po kami sa pantalan. In fact, the right term is tinatapo na po kami sa pantalan, tinutulak na po kami sa pantalan. Because in our province, in Mindanao, usong-uso po yung mga pantalan na hindi na po dinadaungan ng mga barko. So, you are free to use that for whatever purpose you have in mind. Kung gusto mong matutong lumangoy or you want to practice your seasoned skills, then go ahead and do it. True enough, dun po ako natutong lumangoy. At dun din po na-trigger ang aking survival instincts pagdating sa tubig, sa kakatalon nga sa pantalan dahil sa takot. So talagang pipilitin mo mag-survive until eventually you will learn how to properly swim. But as years went by, I got involved with basketball. So, minahal ko rin po ang basketball while doing tennis, gymnastics, and uh, bowling on the side because my mother was a champion in bowling. Pero bago pa po ang lahat, hindi ko po naman na yun. So, huwag na po nating ipilit, hindi ko po naman na ang kagalingan niya sa paglalaro ng bowling. Finally, I fell in love with volleyball. Ayan. So, I can say na this is where my heart settled dahil ito po yung pinakamatagal kong sport na nilaro. 
Now, during my athletic journey, there was a season in my life that was very difficult dahil nahirapan po akong i-handle yung team. And it was the beginning of a national tournament. So, malaking event po siya sa school namin. And then, I also know na hindi kami fully prepared. Why? Because dalawa lang kaming alumni na natira na nakapaglaro na before. The rest of us were uh, newbies. So, wala pa silang experience sa national tournament. And it made them really, really scared. Another factor is we knew our enemy, kung sino yung kalaban namin that time. They are from a very a very good school as well, very good university, and alam namin kung paano sila maglaro, magaling sila, nakalaban na po namin sila before, and to be honest, hindi pa kami nanalo sa kanila before. So that triggered the fear all the more. But what distracted me the most was my libero. Kasi po yung libero ko matapang yun eh, magaling talaga siya kumuha ng first ball, or she dives into the ball para hindi talaga mahulog yung bola. But then, when I saw her afraid, it contributed to my fear as well. Na parang, kung, kung siya palang takot na paano pa kaya ako. Parang ganun yung feeling ko that time. So, I was looking at her. Her name is Reyes. That's her last name. Sabi ko, okay ka lang? And then she said to me, I don't think I can play. I, I, I don't know how to handle this. Sabi, sabi niya sa akin. And I was... Um, shocked with her response because as I've said, she was a brave uh, girl. She was courageous in talagang kilala siya sa ibang schools because of her skill set. So naglakad kami, sabi ko, halika, let's walk uh, around the court kasi medyo matagal pa naman bago mag-start. So naglakad-lakad po kami dun sa court. Until hindi namin na malaya na nandun na kami sa side kung saan yung kalaban namin. So, we were strolling along the enemy's camp. Hindi po namin na malayan yun. But all we know is that they are a very, very strong team. And they're really, really good in what they do. They're really good in playing the sport. So, kami ni Reyes, naglalakad lang po kami doon. Nakatungo po kami because we were really discouraged. We were thinking, paano namin matatalo to? Eh, ang galing-galing nito. Ang lakas-lakas nito. Bihirang-bihira pa sila matalo. So, what chance do we have? So, so, naglalakad po kami until my libero, si Reyes, saw a jersey bag which contains the logo of the university the enemy belongs to. So, doon namin na-realize na nandun na kami sa maling area, na nandun na kami sa area ng kalaban namin. So, nahiya po kami. So, we pretended na we didn't see the bag. So, naglakad lang po kami. <laughs> naglakad lang kami doon sa court until we overheard some of their players whispering about us. And here's what they said. Huy, ayan yung captain ng kabilang team. Ay, nakakatakot yan. Eh, tapos si Reyes, yan yung libero. Magaling yan, magaling yung Reyes na yan. Alam niyo po, pagkatapos namin marinig yun, especially si Reyes, <laughs> she lifted her head up and she was full of courage. She was full of confidence. Why? Because it's amazing when you hear or when you overhear what the enemy actually thinks about you. The man of God whom we are going to discuss today can be found in Judges 6 and whose name is Gideon. Let's read from verse 1. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes, coming with their livestock and tents, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. 
from the verses we've just read, we can establish na hindi po basta-bastang kalaban ng Midianites. They are strong, they are vicious, they are numerous, and they can easily take everything away from you in a snap kapag kinalaban mo sila. So imagine Gideon being chosen by God at such a time as that. So, kung babasahin niyo po further yung conversation nila, they had a, quite a long discussion dahil po si Gideon ay full of doubts. He was full of doubts, he was full of fear, he was insecure, and to prove that, ang una pa niyang sinabi sa Panginoon ay these words, Lord, kung nandito ka, kung totoo ka, ano nangyari sa amin? Bakit nagkaganito yung buhay namin? Asa na yung mga promises mo, miracles, yung power mo? Lord, parang iniwan mo naman kami. So the Lord heard that. And He encouraged Gideon, I have chosen you. You are a mighty man of valor. I will be with you. You shall lead my people. And you will defeat the Midianites. Sa tingin niyo po, nung narinig niyo yun, sumunod na siya? Hindi. Ito po ang sagot niya sa Panginoon. Lord, bakit naman ako? We are the weakest clan in the tribe of Manasseh. So bakit ako? Ako na nga yung kulilat. Eh, kami yung ko. Ang hirap naman ng pinapagawa mo, Lord. And once again, the Lord encouraged him that he will be with him. Sa tingin niyo po, sumunod na si Gideon? Hindi. Meron siyang tatlong but dahil tatlong beses niya po hinamon ng Panginoon. At sabi niya, Lord, Give me these signs. Prove to me. Kung totoong sasamahan mo ko, gawin mo to. And prinove po yun lahat ng Panginoon. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sounds familiar? <laughs> familiar po ba ang istorya ni Gideon? We are all Gideons and we are in constant spiritual battle. That's why when we focus too much on our fears, when we focus too much on our insecurities, lahat ng kakulangan natin sa buhay, when we focus too much on our enemy, when we focus too much on our problems, our marriage, our family, our work, our school, whatever, our finances, when we focus too much on that, we easily lose our confidence. Katulad po, nung nangyari sa amin ni Reyes, even before the battle started, we already felt defeated. That's why, actually, the ending of that, nanalo kami. <laughs> but you know, the beginning, we felt defeated because we focus on the wrong things. We focus on the enemy of how great our enemy was instead of focusing of how great how greater our God is. So, this is the message of the Lord today, my dear friend. If you know what the enemy thinks about you, the truth about it, how he thinks about you, you will have more confidence in winning this battle because this is what the Lord wants. You are to win the battle. That is his plan. So, moving astray or going astray from the original plan, dyan po tayo nagkakaproblema because we, we tend to focus on our doubts, focus on our fears. But I pray that through the life of Gideon and what he had been through, we will learn from his mistakes and we will trust the Lord that through him, we shall win the battle. Listen to this. Even if you don't believe everything the Bible says about you, the enemy knows that everything God has spoken through His Word to you is absolutely true. So even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that you are victorious. You are victorious. Even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that you have been forgiven and you are lavishly loved by the Lord. Even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that He is under your feet. Even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that you have the power and authority that he can never, ever have because you are the child of God. Even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that when he creates a weapon against you, it shall never prosper. Even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that you have been made competent by the Spirit of God. And even if you don't believe, the enemy knows that because God is for you, nobody can be against you. Everything changes when you know how the enemy thinks about you because you are a threat to the enemy. 
You are the chosen one of God. And His plan has always been for you to win the battle. When you enter the room, the enemy shakes because you are there. He says, Nako, nandito na yung anak ng Diyos. He is been, he's covered by the blood of Jesus. I cannot defeat this child of God. When you enter a place, the enemy screams, the enemy shouts because this is the woman who prays unto the Lord. This is the woman who is fighting for her family by the Spirit of God. He is afraid of you. It is such a shame that our enemy is more convinced of our potential, of our God-given authority more than us. It is such a shame. It is a waste that the enemy even knows more and believes more than us. Mga kapatid, huwag po nating hayaan ng ganitong sistema sa buhay natin. We have to abandon all the lies. We have to dwell on the truth. And the truth is the Word of God. Who He says He is in the Word of God is actually who He is in your life. When He says that He is the Jehovah Rapha, He will heal you. When He says that He is Jehovah Nisi, He is the banner of victory over your life. When He says that He will provide, He will provide whatever the promise of the Lord is to you. He shall surely make it come to pass because He is God. He is a faithful God and no word, no any word that He has spoken shall return to Him void. Not a single word will fall to the ground unfulfilled. Everything the Lord has promised you. Even maghintay ka pa ng 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, He shall surely make it come to pass. But you've got to believe. You know, we learn from Gideon as much as we learn from Joshua, from Moses, from David, from Peter, from Paul, from Mary, from Esther, from John. They only had one strategy. And that is to abandon their ways, abandon the lies the enemy has given to their lives, the enemy has planted in their lives, abandon it and surrender or submit to the ways of God and dwell on the truth. Mga kapatid, if you really want to win this battle, you've got to do it God's way. Moving on to the next chapter, we see that God has chosen 300 of Gideon soldiers. And ito po ay para wala silang maipagmalaki kapag nakamit na nila ang victory just as, just as the Lord has promised them. And the Midianites actually had 135,000 soldiers. So the ratio is 450 to 1. And talk about the underdog. <laughs> but you know, this is our take home for today. I want you to leave this Sunday morning. I want you to leave this uh, your seats wherever you are right now ready tomorrow, ready on your daily battles and claiming the, the victory which is rightfully yours because yan ang pangako ng Panginoon sa inyo and ito Ang tinatayuan natin, remember that you are coming from the victory. From, ibig sabihin tapos na. And you are not coming for the victory. It is already finished because you have Jesus in your lives. You've already won. You just have to claim it. You just have to believe. You just have to walk and experience the power of God. If we read Judges chapter 7 verse 9 onwards, we will find that ang Panginoon kinausap muli si Gideon. And this time, sabi ng Panginoon, get up, tumayo ka dyan. Pumunta ka na dun sa Midianite camp kasi binigay ko niyan sa'yo. You are already victorious. The victory is yours. Sure win yan. Kasama mo ko. Pero kung takot ka, <laughs> the Lord said to Gideon, pero kung takot ka, isama mo yung servant mo si Pura. Pumunta kayo dun sa Midianite camp and listen carefully dun sa conversation ng Midianites. Then, you will be greatly encouraged and you will be eager to attack their camp. Nakakatawa ang Panginoon kasi imagine, pagkatapos ng napakahabang conversation ninyo ng Panginoon, 
si Gideon, after all the signs, he asked the Lord. And the Lord did it, by the way. Everything he asked for. After all the conversation, the encouragement, the Lord said to Gideon, the Lord knew na takot pa rin si Gideon. Kasi ang response po ni Gideon doon was actually the second part. Yung dinala niya si Pura. Kasi alam na ng Panginoon na takot siya. Sabi niya, oh ito na yung binigay ko. Pero kung takot ka, at yun ang sinunod ni Gideon. So alam ng Panginoon na takot pa rin si Gideon. It's like Gideon was telling God, Lord, hindi kasi hindi mo kasi naintindihan eh. Mahirap na kalaban to. Yun ang akala ng, ang akala ni Gideon na hindi yun uunawaan ng Panginoon. So, so to finally convince him, the humor of God was that he allowed Gideon to overhear or to hear the conversation of the Midianites about him. So he allowed Gideon to hear what the enemy thinks about him. And what the enemy thinks about him was they were afraid because they knew that the hand of the Lord was upon Gideon. The, the power of the Lord was upon Gideon. The promises of the Lord was upon Gideon. So natakot sila. And actually, that moment, dun lang talaga nabuhay ang courage ni Gideon. And his response, take note of it, uh, of this can be found in verse 15. It says, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, Get up, for the Lord has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. You want to win the battle? Begin the battle on your knees. Let's all learn from Gideon. Alam niyo po, when he heard the confirmation of the Lord, lahat ng sinabi ng Panginoon ay totoo, his first response was to worship the Lord. He worshiped the Lord in advance, even before he knew the strategy. Tandaan po ninyo, he only knew that he, they will win. Pero that time, or that moment, wala pa siyang battle plan. Hindi pa niya alam how to. He worshiped the Lord in advance. He celebrated the victory even before it actually happened by having the heart of worship. He worshiped the Lord in the face of danger. He worshiped the Lord in the face of adversity. And take note, he worshiped the Lord even if he knows that they were outnumbered. 300 pa rin sila, and then 135,000 pa rin yung kalaban. Wala nagbago, and yet he worshiped the Lord. That was his response to God. He battled first on his knees. And that is a very powerful response. When God sees your heart of worship, hindi pwedeng hindi mo makuha ang kiliti ng Panginoon. Hindi pwedeng hindi gagalaw ang Diyos because God loves a pure heart and God loves a true worshiper. If you will remember the time of uh, Joshua, when they crossed the Jordan River, they were in constant battle right away. The first battle there they had was the Battle of Jericho. And ang pinaka problema nila doon was the walls surrounding uh, the city because or the camp because it was impenetrable. Masyadong malakas yung walls, masyadong matibay, masyadong mataas. Hindi alam ni Joshua ang gagawin. And so the Lord instructed Joshua, here's what I want you to do. In six days, palibutan nyo yung, yung walls. Ikutan nyo. Ikot lang kayo in six days. But on the seventh day, you will um, go around the walls seven times. And then shout. Then, the walls will fall down. Anong ibig sabihin dito ng Panginoon? Don't wait for the walls to fall down. And then shout. You shout first, and then the walls will fall down. I imagine, kung ganito tayo sa buhay natin, na before the problem, we already shout in advance. We already worship in advance. And it's, it's going to be amazing when you see that come through, uh, come through to your life because that is the promise of the Lord. You shall win this battle, remember? So if you want to win the battle, begin the battle on your knees. 
Let's go back to verse 15. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, Get up! For the Lord has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. You want to win the battle? Begin the battle on your knees, then face the battle from a position of victory. Alam niyo po, my dear brothers and sisters, let me remind you that we are fighting from the victory, not for the victory. Again, eh, we are fighting from the victory, not for the victory. It simply means that we already have that victory because we are part of God's family. Satan knows that. Satan believes that. Do you? <laughs> Alam niyo po si Gideon. After he worshipped the Lord, he went back to the Israelite camp. He rushed to the Israelite camp and he said, Get up, for the Lord has given us victory over the Midianite hordes. He didn't say, Get up. Tapos, let's hope. Let's hope sana manalo tayo. Kaya natin to, guys. Hindi siya ganon. He didn't say, Get up. And then, let's pray. At talagang gawin ni Lord yung sinabi niya. He, he didn't have that attitude. He stood from the victory's face, you know, galing siya dun sa worshiping the Lord. And then he faced the battle from a position of victory because he now he believed the Lord, his God, that everything the Lord has told him is actually true. So he stood from a position of victory. Ay, alam niyo po, mga kapatid, there are over, over 8,000 promises of the Lord in His Word. And all we have to do is to claim it every single day. I don't know about you, but ako po kasi, hindi ako nagsisettle to just know the Word of God. I do not settle na alam ko yung nangyari sa Old Testament, like the parting of the Red Sea. I do not settle that I know that God raised Lazarus from the dead in the New Testament. I do not settle for that. I want to actually experience every single promise of the Lord in my own life. I want it to be customized to me. I want it to be personalized to me. Because promise niya yun eh. Yung promise niya kay Noah, kay Moses, kay Abraham, lahat promise niya rin sa'yo. Promise niya rin sa akin. So sabi ko, Lord, I want to experience this because this is you. This is more of you. This is more of who you are. And this is your promise to me. And that has been my heart's desire to know Him more by by who He truly is and, and what He says He is. I want to experience Him more and more each day. So if there are over 8,000 promises of God, what are you doing about it? Are you... You know, these are great opportunities to experience the power of God in your life. To experience Him personally in your life. But those promises were not handed over to us. It was not just given to us and placed it in our hands. Actually, He placed it within our reach. Ibig sabihin, there is a process involved. You have to cooperate with God. You know, to do it His way. In order for us to experience the fullness of God. In order for us to experience the victory that is already in us. Kapag hindi po natin, hindi tayo nakikipag-cooperate, nagkakaproblema. We do not experience the promises of the Lord. So, the Lord has not put it in our hands. The Lord has put it, with, put it within our reach because there is a process involved. We have to take the step first. We have to cooperate. And the best example to that is, again, si Joshua. When, when the Lord has um, commissioned Joshua to be the new leader after Moses in chapter 1, Sabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua, here's the promise. Every place you put your foot on, the land is yours. So it's already yours, but you have to put your foot on it. You have to claim it. You have to step on it. So kailangan makipag-cooperate ni Joshua sa Panginoon. And when he did that, when he stepped his foot on it, 
that's the time he experienced the power of the Lord. That's the time he experienced the fullness of the Lord. And that's the time he experienced or he enjoyed the promised land of the Lord because he obeyed, he cooperated, he submitted to the ways of God, he abandoned his ways, he worshipped the Lord, and then he faced the battle from the point of victory or from the position of victory. So if you want to win the battle, first begin the battle on your knees and then face the battle from a position of victory. We finish strong in verse 16 where Gideon divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and the clay with a torch in it. Hindi ko po alam sa inyo but my Bible has headings and subheadings for every chapter, for every turn of the chapter, for every turn in the story in the chapter and it even has introductions prior to the book we are reading. Now going back to the heading and the subheadings, my Bible says Nakasulat po dito, the confusion of the enemy. And of course, we know the story that the reason why Gideon um, won the battle was because God's strategy was to confuse the enemy's camp. And of course, the, the Lord kept his promise to Gideon. But if I were to give it another title, of course, the Bible is accurate. Wala pong pwedeng baguhin dyan. But, you know, may naisip lang akong ibang title while I was studying this. And if I were to give it a title, I would say the confusion of the 300. <laughs> Bakit po? Because, imagine si Gideon, he stood firm on the promise of the Lord. He worshipped God. He, he faced the battle from a stance or a position of victory. And then he went back to the Israelite camp. Ginising niya lahat. Sabi niya, Oh, tayo na kayo. For the Lord has given us victory over the Midianite, uh, Midianite horde. So imagine the boost in the morale of the soldiers. Kasi imagine si Gideon before. They knew Gideon na insecure, they knew Gideon na doubtful, they knew Gideon that they were, uh, he was afraid, but then Gideon came back so encouraged after he worshipped the Lord, he went back to the Israelite camp, and then he was firm that he, he, they will have the victory, and then here's what happened. He gave each man a ram's horn, a clay jar, and a torch. <laughs> so kung ako yung right hand mo, I would simply ask, are you kidding me? Sinasabi mo ba sa akin na ito yung battle plan? Pagkatapos mong i-worship si Lord, pagkatapos mo, okay ka lang, you wouldn't ask me to pick up sword, you wouldn't ask me to pick up bows and arrows, you wouldn't ask me to pick up my shield, you are giving me a ram's horn, a clay jar, and a torch. Anong klaseng battle strategy yan? So imagine what his army thought of. It absolutely makes no sense at all. But my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I tell you the truth. Most of the time, God's strategy doesn't make sense. But the thing is, the best way to win the battle is to only use God's divine strategy. Pag siyang nagbigay ng strategy, no matter how weird it is, no matter how amazingly weird it is, even during the time of Jericho, yung battle of Jericho, it's the same weird thing. Ikaw naman, umikot-ikot ka dun sa wall, tapos at the 70, nadagdagan pa yung ikot mo, and then you shout. But you know, no matter how weird the strategy is, only use God's divine strategy. You want to win the battle, you battle first on your knees or you begin the battle on your knees. You face the battle from a position of victory and you only use God's divine strategy. God's strategy will rarely match up your strategy. Sa totoo lang po, it's always different because He said in Isaiah 55, For my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts and your ways are nothing like my ways but the promise of the lord is the promise of the lord kapag sinabi niya sure yan 
sure win yan na gagawin niya yan sa buhay mo. Again, if you want to win the battle, begin the battle on your knees, face the battle from a position of victory. So you believe with all your heart. You celebrate prior to your victory itself. <laughs> Alam niyo po yun, you worship the Lord, you celebrate prior to the victory itself. It, it, it shows our faith. And then, we only use God's divine strategy. Let's pray. Abba, our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your wonderful word for us today. Right now, I just speak forth the valor that you have given Gideon to be upon us. I speak forth the courage you have instilled in the heart of Gideon to be upon each and every one who is watching right now. I speak forth the favor and the anointing that you have allowed to flow in Gideon's veins to be upon each and every one of us. Lord, right now, I just claim, I claim and I believe that as we worship you, as we face the battle in the position of victory, and as we use only your strategy, we shall indeed win the battle, the daily battle in our lives. And may you use us mightily, O God, as you've promised in your word, as we experience the fullness of your power, as we experience the fullness of your promises in our personal lives. May we continue to be the salt and light you have called us to be. Lord, you only required one person to believe and that's more than enough for you. And so we surrender our lives. Use us, Lord. Use us. In Jesus' name.